Hello everybody, welcome back to Divinity Original Sin, the Enhanced Edition. Ah, I'm quite, quite, not quite sure where we left off last episode, so let's have a quick look, shall we? Uh, what are we up to? Right, we need to find the ship with sailors' jobs, I remember that. Fabulous Five, we can't do that yet. Uh, Blood Feud, we can do that, I suppose. So, Hunter's Journey. Right, okay. Not in the mood for cheese. The murder, where are we up to? Right, we need to go to see Ahu. First of all. Right, that should be easy enough, I think. Let's head this way. I don't know if you can see that. Why is it Stai doing that? See that little blurry line there across there? Let's see if we can get rid of that, shall we? Whoops. Back uh, options. Video. Let's try that, see if that shifts it. There we go, that's removed it. Don't know what that was. Uh, this way is it. Yeah. So we need to head our way down here and talk to Ahu. And we can also pick up another uh, companion, if I remember correctly. Yes, indeed. Now I pulled her off you before she could do any real damage. That's it, troops. Train up while you can. The next orcish strike could land at any moment. Come on with the dramatics. It's not as bad as all that. Let's talk to this guy. Come on. Stand where my good eye can see you. Easy, Tull. That's the source hunter you're talking to. A curious situation we got here is the woman in this cage under arrest. She may have the look of a woman if you squint hard enough, but she's no more than a wild animal. We got reports of a strange-looking outsider skulking through the town with her bow drawn. I found her crouched behind a tree, taking aim at a fat old rat trotting along the city walls. I tapped her on the shoulder to see what was what, and the beast startled like a wild cat and lunged right at me. Bit tell you right in the face, she did. It wasn't pretty, and now it's got a chunk ripped off it to boot. Now it's got a, a chunk ripped off. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? Enjoy it while you can, Ver. There's not another legionnaire in the cohort that'll have you if I go rabid. Well, that's to be decided. She doesn't seem to be sick, despite Tully's moaning. We can't keep her here forever, but we can't well send her into the wilds again, can we? Uh, perhaps it would be worth taking this treasure under our wing. She's likely to come in handy if we can trust her to watch our backs. We're here to hunt souls, not play babysitter. No, we want to. We want to. After all, a fearless hunter might prove quite useful for our investigation. Well, that's a relief, ain't it? We found a good home for her after all, Tull. Heed me, source hunter. She's not good for anything more than cannon fodder. And don't turn your back on her when she's got that bow within arm's reach. Okay, and this is Bear Daughter. Okay. Source Hunter, I have heard tales both grand and terrible about the world of humans. I myself was caged one moment and freed the next by your, our, kind. In Home Forest, every creature acts according to the nature of its kind. Birds frighten easily, badgers fear little. But amongst men, there are no guarantees. Uh, what have we got a choice of here? There is little in our world more variable than the minds of men. It is the source of a great beauty and much despair. Are all of it uniquely human? Yes, have you noticed we are an unpredictable species as likely to kill as to heal? It's best to be aware of those you meet for this very reason. Uh, I think we'll go with that. If you say it is so, then wary I will be. As the god wolf Amira commanded Threes. Win you from your wicked world, or cold company will corrupt you. Attention! 
Um, so I think we've got some items there. Yes, we have. Dagger. Um, Bear Daughter's Bull. Let's equip all that, shall we? Send to Bear Daughter. Uh, she can have that as well. For the time being. Sorry, sir. She doesn't need that. She can't use it. Uh, what else we got? Treat poisoning. We can move that over there. Range power stance. We'll leave that over here, I think. Yes. We should Sorry, also sir. got all these, and I think all grey's got some. Yes. Well, not all grey. Roderick. Center battle. The battle. Bado, bear daughter. <laughs> That's what I called on the last uh, run through that I did. And she can also lock picks and trap disarm toolkits, I think. Uh, I'll send that to her in case that was good. And that. Sorry, sir. Uh, the work ball's better, so I can go back to Roderick to sell. Type. I suppose I can move that to there and that to there in a moment. She's only got those skills, so we can uh, add some of these onto this screen. Static cloud, steam cloud, a stunning arrow. Really don't think we need those on yet. Right, let's just go and have a word with uh, the captain and Arhus, whatever he's going to hold. Ah, who was it? Um, do I want to? Yes, I want to get rid of some of this stuff that he's got here as well. So, I think we'll wait for him to walk over this side ish. And we can grab his attention. Here we go. Right, that's a good place. What have we here? Then? No, it's not. Not the quite. The so-called source hunter, eh? Well, look, do what you must in Sicil, but don't make waves and don't interfere with the Legion's affairs. You hear? Yes, I hear. But I'm just going to ignore you for a second because I want uh, bed daughter. Where can she go to? Right, we can have that. Out of that. What else is the key? Potion bottle, potion bottle. Don't want to pick pocket. Ink pot. Ooh, blank earth skill book, that's a good one. Nothing there. I think that's all we need. It is. Right, back to the conversation. Let's discuss Jake's murder. God's above! Some politician snuffs it and everyone's in an uproar. Ridiculous! I told that wizard brat of an Ahu not to bother. But he just had to send for source hunters, didn't he? Bloody magicians. They see a pigeon poop and think sorcery's afoot. <laughs> Nevertheless, I want to be kept in the loop. 
Understand? I am in command of this town. Not Mayor Cecil, not Ahu, and definitely not some hotshot source hunter. So investigate Jake's death if you feel so inclined, but report back to me the moment you discover something out of the ordinary. The scene of the crime is over at the King Crab Inn. You can tell the guard you have my permission to enter. Now off with you! Wow. Esmeralda is Jake's wife. Well, well, widow. Everyone in town, down to the crabs on the beach, is convinced she killed him. Now, the girl has the reputation of being a flirt. There is that. But that doesn't suffice as evidence, wouldn't you say? Or do source hunters rely on hearsay alone, perhaps? That certainly would explain some of the cock-ups you lot have made in the past. What? You're going to stand there and claim with a straight face your order never wrongly tortured and executed anyone? Thirdly, but I won't stand for such nonsense. If you bring evidence before me, I'll evaluate it with perfect objectivity. The Legion relies on reason, see? Not idle superstition. Wow, he's really got a poker up his bum, hasn't he? Uh, additional oh, questions. If you must. Bravo! Figured that one out, did you? I haven't been stuck here for two years because we're being besieged by fluffy kittens, you know. Those brain-feasting freaks out there keep on coming. And it takes all the sword arms and all of our who's half-baked contraptions to keep them at bay. Keeping them at bay, that is all we do. Were that I could break their backs once and for all. Wow. <laughs> he really is full of himself. We are the pride of Rivalon. To be found and to be seen everywhere. We don't hide in the dark and lurk in corners like some I could mention. No, we protect the civilized from the barbaric, and we do so impeccably. I'd say they are looking for weak spots in our defenses. They can't make an attack over land for fear of Ahu's magical machines, so they're trying their luck by sea. They won't succeed, though. Not against the Legion. Ahu tells me he suspects the sect might be at work around Sizeal. Yes, and he also spends most of his time in the guise of a cat, licking God's knows which body parts. Sects, sorcerers. He'll be seeing flying carpets next. Well, I really hate to ask this, but how are you enjoying Sizeal? How am I enjoying it? <laughs> are you spoiling for a fight, Hunter? Are you? Sizeal stinks of fish. Reeks of orcs, and on a good day, the wind disperses the stench of decomposing corpses. I can't remember the last time I had a proper piece of steak, and by now, I wretch at the mere sight of sardines. So, in conclusion, I am not enjoying Sicil. Well, I think when I'm about level 20, I might come back and slay you, you horrible little man. Right, I'm glad I robbed you. I said to Ahu, have some civilized conversation, shall we? Oh, good, he's coming over here. How can I help you, my friend? And we'll rob you blind as well, shall we? <laughs> Let's have a see. Uh, here you smelt it, dealt it. Don't empty bottle. Painting of a pig, all that. Control the manual, we'll have that. I've got my eyes on the prize. Magic unlock scroll, yes. Secrets of the scroll. Secrets of the scroll volume two. Absence of the seven gods. Uh, we'll have it because we'll sell it. Ink pot, take that for crafting. I don't think we need anything else. Well, I'll check his desk. Ooh. Uh, what else we got? Well, that seems fine. Join companions. There we go. 
Let's talk about source onto business. By all means. Of course. I hope your investigation fares well. What happened the night of the murder? I can but piece together what few morsels fell from the grapevine into a rather disappointing meal, I'm afraid. They say a woman arrived in the King Crab Inn sometime after midnight. She retired to a room on the ground floor where she was soon joined by a man who had been nursing the same cup of wine for hours. I say man and woman because both of them were cloaked and recognized by none. About an hour later, another figure arrived, headed for the same room. Soon after, a terrible commotion erupted and the thundering light of magic was witnessed by the few remaining patrons. It took a while for the landlord to pluck up the courage to enter the mystery room. When finally he did, he found Jake there, dead. How and why he came to be there, no one knows. But I had a good look around the scene of the crime before the Legion barred anyone from entering. The traces of magic I felt were vile. Source, no doubt. Who, in your opinion, are the suspects? I myself have none. Even though the rest of the town has already mentally tried and convicted Jake's wife, Esmeralda. Now, it may well be established that she is, in fact, the guilty party. I'm not claiming that I'm certain she's innocent, but let's just say that if I really thought this murder case would be so very easily resolved, I wouldn't have sent for source hunters. Is there more you can tell me about the strangers that seem to be in league with the orcs? I can't say much more, but that they're madmen. All the more dangerous to us because of their alliance with what should be a natural enemy. You won't see me teaming up with a terrier in a hurry. How about you tell me a bit more about yourself, Ahu? But certainly. What would you like to know? Who, or rather what, are you? Oh, I am but a wizard. A guardian of man and beast. And indeed, I am both. My body, like any other, is bound to temporal decay. But my spirit is a speck of light that shone forth from the eternal sun that is the cosmic soul. My task upon this earth is to protect the heart of nature. The very antithesis of which is the intrigue spun by demons and directors of the dead. Hence my involvement in Sysio. You see, my one desire is to witness a world in which every mother looks around her and purrs with calm contentment. For she knows that her chicks or children, her cubs or calves, will grow up without knowing the meaning of menace, the enfeeblement of fear. That's a very nice thing to wish for, man. To my great regret, none of them purr as yet. Uh, do tell me a bit more about this cat trick of yours. Oh, but that's not a trick. It's a blessing. Or does it surprise you that I enjoy taking a feline guy? Such magic is a gift, Hunter. To tread upon the realm of instinct. Even articulate speech. Perhaps humanity's greatest asset cannot give expression to something so inextricably innate. To be out in the night, to stalk on silent paws and hunt with only the moon as your witness. You couldn't possibly imagine the thrill. But of course it's handy to speak in more than meows. And I couldn't brew potions or make machines without opposable thumbs, this I freely admit. Let's just say... I have found a way to enjoy the best of two worlds. Hasn't he got a very soothing voice? Isn't it dangerous to polymorph like you do? What if he gets stuck in another form? Oh, that'll never happen. Granted, a witch could make the polymorph permanent if she'd enchant me and my cat guys, but I'll just have to be careful around witches, won't I? I'm my own wizard, you know. And I don't intend to become anyone's familiar. Okay. And what might those be? Uh, someone mentioned one of your failed experiments. One of them? Failed? Who is the mongrel that dares to question my engineering expertise? 
I take it the mutt in question was referring to the Sparkmaster 5000. It isn't failing, it just became... Well, it became self-aware. Frightfully annoying when that happens. <laughs> you know what? Here's the remote access device with which I used to control it. There's a manual for that somewhere around here, too. Yours, if you can find it. I really should invite Victoria one of these days so she can help me organize my mess of a library. What can we do about the undead that threaten Cyseal? Those who are raising the dead dwell among us. They simply must be. But even though I've spent many a night leaping from tree to rooftop, watching on as citizens stagger home from the inn or simply burn the midnight oil, I haven't spied a single soul worthy of true suspicion. The enemy is wily. They know us better than we know them, and they've found ways to avoid both detection and distrust. And yet, I am somehow convinced that you may succeed where the Legion and I have failed. Call it instinct. Uh, you seem to have a bit of an orc problem, do you not? You have a flair for understatements, Hunter. I'm sure they are but a minor nuisance in the eyes of a born warrior. But to the Legion, they are green-skinned death incarnate. Until they conclude what mischief they intend to see through, or less likely, they are conclusively defeated, we can but bar the gates and hole up like mice while the cats are on the prowl. How do you design those magical ballistae of yours? Oh. A mere trifle for one with the intellect of a feline and the engineering skills of a human. You basically construct a classic ballista, add a 100% legally obtained self-regenerating <laughs> source of destructive magic to it, and bobcats your uncle. Okay, let's. I don't think we can afford anything, but we'll have a look what he's got to purchase. Oh, he's got some. Uh, Skills that we might need. Bless. That's level 6, don't want that. Boulder Bash. 45, level 3. We'll have to come back here when we've got some money, I think. Firefly, level 3. How much have we got? We've got 813. We'll check. We'll come back again sometime, I think. Yes, we will. Okay, I'll take my leave. There we go. Anything on here that we need? Nine inch nails. Trap this arm cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, if that? only the popular girls from the Source Academy could see how edgy and dangerous you've become. And I think we can combine that. It's arrow shaft. Branch. Oh, no, 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 no. Want to equip? What are you doing, Nick? Now, what do you have equipped then? Wooden earth stuff. Equip. Must have been that. Yes. No, combine. Combine with. Nine-inch nails. And it gives us a weapon. Yes. I don't think there's anything else we can do. No. A new recipe. Right, let's head downstairs. Right, so we need to inspect the crime scene, if I remember correctly. Recruits! That was sloppier than Sicilian stew. Again! So we will head over and do that. Do that one, one 
this one. There we go. I think it's the wee merchant that's upstairs in the inn that has the witchcraft stuff. Have we talked to that cat yet? Never saw you in the King Crab before. You're welcome to scratch me behind the ears if you like. I won't scratch back. I am Unsinkable Sam. At least that's what they call me around here. He used to be a ship's cat, but the clipper I was on sank when I was the only one to wrestle himself free from the waves. The people here were kind and took me in. Been the King Crab's foremost patron ever since. Tell them about the ship you were on. A magnificent ship she was. Used to belong to a pirate, I was told. Unlike me, she didn't prove to be unsinkable, though. We hit the cliffs right neath the lighthouse. Not very apt a name for that building, I must say, for no light was shining from it. The moment I hit the water, I writhed around like I would on a hot tin roof. By some miracle, I managed to reach the beach, covered in kelp and smelling worse than a fish's funeral parlor. But I was alive, and that was more than anybody else could say. You were the only survivor. So I was. What friends I had, they drowned alongside the rats I used to hunt in the galley. And there I was, all alone. Not that I had it bad here, mind you. I milk and fish aplenty. Most folks will pet me kindly, and when one of the village girls holds me tight against her ample bosom, I purr up a storm. <laughs> but I do long for a companion of my own kind. And in that regard, there is no one like Maxine. About Maxine? Maxine, the mayor's darling pet. So gentle, so fair a feline. The grace of her whiskers, the subtle palette of dyes in her sable coat. She's one of a kind, that cat. She likes me, I know she does. But when I declare my love, she backs away. I don't know why, I have serenaded her and braved many a bucket of water for my efforts. But for some reason, she is not to be swayed. I have some other questions for you. By all means. What's your take on the undead? Really? Would I ask a cat that? People make a fuss about them because they endanger the lands around the city. They never bother me when I'm out for my monthly walk, though. But still, I do detest them. I mean, they're so unnatural, aren't they? Cats can have nine lives, but humans are only entitled to one. Can you tell me more about the orcs? Oh, don't mention orcs to me. Worse than dogs, that lot. Sank Walrus Willie's boat right from under him. Best anchovy fisher in the world he was. A loss to us all. Okay, I'll take my leave. Thank you for the info. I'm not going to talk to you. Because you're one of the famous five and so are you. And you're very annoying. As you are. But we need to talk to this gentleman here. Greetings, source hunter. I don't mean to hinder your investigation, but I can't open this door for anyone who hasn't received Captain Aureus' explicit approval. I've spoken to Aureus. Let me inside, please. Not exactly the friendliest bloke, the captain is. No, he's not. He's an asshole. Well, your reward for getting your ear chewed off is a waltz through the town's finest magical murder scene. Uh, thank you very much. Ouch. Oh, yes, I forgot about this. What? What happened? Is this a dream? I don't think so. That stone. Somehow, it sent us flying into the stars. I think it might be more frightening than they sound. <laughs> Did you get here? Oh yes, 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 yes. Proper introductions. 
Zigzags the historian at your service. It is my job to record all that was and is and hopefully all that is to be. As for how I got here, well, for a historian appointed by the gods themselves, hopping to the end of time is as easy as one, two, three. How you got here, though, that's a rather more interesting question. On such a tiny and rapidly shrinking vestige of space and time, I wouldn't have expected to find a soul but my own shadow. Why is this place, as you say, shrinking? Ah, at last, the question I can answer most definitively. I mentioned already that this place is the end of time. If that didn't send your heart into your stomach and your pulse a flutter, it should have. Time ought naturally to have no end at all. Indeed, I can think of no worse nightmare for a chronicler such as myself. But something totally, utterly terrible has happened. Okay, out with it, Sir Imp. What exactly has happened here? Show, don't tell, I always say. So go, peer through yonder looking lens and feast your soon to be terrified eyes on the darkness that is approaching. You might be quite, quite mad. Then we had better appease him and have a look through the looking lens. Ooh, dragon. You looked. You saw. Terrifying, isn't it? What's this? The portal. It's... It's... Nice before it's all from again, just let's become active. Fantastic, astounding. Onward we should go. Okay, I'll be with you in a second, Mr. Zigzags, whatever your name is. We have things to search first though. I need to search this. Is that it? Alright, okay. Let's talk to the zigzags. The portal! It's quite sprung to life, just like the long dormant flames that decorate this observatory. After all my waiting and hoping, could it be you, dear stranger, you must be the key. Something about your presence here is causing the end of time to grow. The true end itself to move further away. Those torches, a light, this portal active once more. It cannot be coincidence. Okay, you believe we are somehow connected to this place? Uh, yeah, well, that's that one. It's not that I believe, it's that I have seen! Long have I been waiting here, hoping that one day this very portal would ignite then. No longer than a few mere moments after you arrive, zap it goes! The Chronicler of Time knows a pattern when he sees one. Yes, it does seem a coincidence. Uh, can we first discuss what we just witnessed through the looking lens? Goodness me, how right you are. There's so much to take in, I've nearly forgotten. And what you saw has been haunting my mind since I first discovered it. It is the void itself. The dragon that is devouring creation. When I speak of the end of time, this is exactly what I mean. I can't say for sure where it came from, how or why, but I do know this. It's shrinking our future by the second. And if we don't stop it, it will devour the past and present as well. Okay. Well, what lies beyond this portal? Ah, though I cannot say for certain. If it is what I believe, then our prayers might well be answered. In fact, every last question that ever plagued your noggin might well be answered for i believe what lies beyond this portal is nothing other than but why spoil the mystery as soon as we leap through we'll find out for certain okay then through the portal then after you after you oh you first you first 
But don't dilly dally. And he's off. It seems the imp has spotted exactly who and what he'd hoped to find here. Could it be, milady, the weaver of time, mother of history, author of all that has ever been? Indeed, Sir Imp, as surely as you are he who chronicles all that I weave. Astounding! Unbelievable! I have so many questions for you, so much to ask, so much to say. You have brought guests, I see. Strange. Very strange guests. My reaction exactly, milady. It was their arrival here at the end of time that instigated my finding you. But why? Surely you must know. This is a question better put to our guests themselves. Tell us, how did you arrive upon this plane? Um, two choices again. If you truly are the weaver of time, imagine you already know the answer to that. There was a stone, a strange stone that zapped us from where we stood in Riverlong to this plane among the stars. That sounded like something, I'd say. A stone? So, it was a stone that caused the great shock of energy that brought you here, and it infused you with new life as well. Is that so? Yes, that's just what happened. Have you seen it before? Not like this, no. What happened to you is unique in all my work. Never had I experienced something so contrary to my nature. To weave something I had not seen, had not expected. Life does not simply spring into existence, you see. But yours has. You appeared before me from the moment you came into contact with that stone. Starstone, I now know it to be called. But, Madam Weaver, how is it possible? Do you not see all? Have you not woven all that is and could ever be into your tapestry? Like the stones, your guests are a mystery to me. I see them before me in this world, but their likenesses appeared not upon my tapestry until they revived the stone. Source Hunters, it would seem that yourselves and Starstone are inextricably linked. Why and how, I cannot say, but I do believe that finding more stones will reveal to me who you yourselves truly are. What is this Starstone exactly? Where does it come from? Starstone is not what it seems, Source Hunter. Its true nature must be part of a greater secret, a secret lost even to me. Do you see what violence my work has suffered? What wounds lay upon the tapestry of time? Mysteries of all time. Gaps in history. Oh, how they've tormented me for eons. It would appear that Starstone transforms at your touch, granting me new thread by which to mend the tapestry. Thus, it restores time itself. I see what the void would shrink. Starstone restores. Yes, though I cannot explain why this Starstone is the antidote to the Void's ravishment of our realm. If we do not restore time, if we do not discover the true nature of these stones, the Void will consume us all. If these stones can heal history, we must seek them out. Yes, we must. Indeed you must, though I may not yet understand why. It seems that you and you alone can unlock the powers within Starstone. Yet we are not the only entities who know these stones to be so much more than pretty gems. Why, of course 
That's what they were doing. I have recorded their doings, you see. Collectors of Starstone, more and more by the day. Now I understand. They'd keep the stones from our reach. They'd prevent the mending of time. Without these stones, Hunter, there will be no Rivalon. The entire tapestry will crumble. Even this plane will fall victim to the Void's insatiable hunger. That shall never be, my lady. As sure as Zix comes before Zax, we will put a stop to it. First we mend the tapestry, then we stop the Void. Please, our most mysterious guest. Are you ready? Are you willing? Will you hunt out the stones? Will you help us restore what has been lost? Uh, we need a conversation. I got something for you if you're up to the challenge. Not but a moment ago, we were hunting source in Rivalon, and now we're being told that we alone can prevent the end of time by way of some magical stones. What do you make of it? Choices again. Say what Zix, Zix Zax and the Weaver will, but I need more evidence for our buy into this wild tale. We can't deny our reaction to Starstorm. The there must be something to all this, uh, much as it may seem. There we no go. No matter how improbable, anything is possible. If the Weaver tells the truth, we have some serious work ahead of us. That is very true. It appears we've now gone from simply investigating a murder. We are now looking into the end of time and trying to cure it. So that seems a good place to end this episode, folks. Uh, don't forget, if you like the videos, please leave me a like and subscribe. Uh, this is all grey. Signing off.